Sure, as always. Appreciate you guys' uh, interest and in, in coming out uh, today. You know, when, when I when I look and, and think about the this past week, uh, the game against Virginia, you know, uh, three things come to mind for me. The first was responding. You know, I talked about uh, whether we would respond or react to uh, what, what took place a couple of weeks ago. Um, I thought our team did a tremendous job of, of answering and responding um, the right way. They took it one play at a time. I mean, that was a tough, tough, gritty win for us. Uh, and when that play was over, they let that play die and went to the next. And, you know, I've seen our team when we've faced a tough, tough parts of a game like we did in the first half of Virginia, I've seen us not necessarily play that with that mindset. And to me, that's the part that jumped up to. The second thing was uh, we, we built awareness as, of ourselves as a team. Um, of course, we did a lot of that during the preseason, but I thought in this recent game, we found out a lot about ourselves. We found out the importance of, uh, of staying in the moment, not playing to a scoreboard. I thought the week before, including myself, as I told our team, I found myself looking at the scoreboard in the third and fourth quarter. And uh, when you play for results, and they, they create anxiety. And I thought our team did a really, really good job uh, building on staying in the moment through that Virginia game and played a major, major role. Um, you know, we got a lot of new players that traveled for the first time, and I like the way that they responded. Um, traveling, it was a late game, a late night game, which we haven't had a bunch of those, a primetime game. And, you know, I really like the way our team uh, 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 finished that game. And then the last part was the growth mindset, which is all part of what uh, Maryland football is all about. Um, we're going to make mistakes throughout the season. Uh, having success and winning championships is not – uh, a straight direct path. You'll have ups, downs, side movements, sometimes take steps back. But I'm really, really excited the way our team grew from week two to week three. Uh, we faced a, a tough Virginia team that came in with a lot of momentum. Coach Elliott has his team playing really well. Uh, going into that game, uh, I know because of the rivalry of playing a Virginia, the importance of you can throw uh, records out the window when you play games like that. And that was a tough, tough win for us. And I'm really proud of our team. Um, for Villanova, here's what I'll say. Uh, they're a veteran bunch. Um, they're, you look at their defense, a bunch of graduates and seniors and guys that have been there six years and five years. And then you look at their quarterback. Uh, the quarterback is the guy that makes their offense go. They have a really extensive RPO package, uh, quarterback run package, uh, the zone read stuff. And, and the guy's been there six years. He's been a three-year starter. Uh, he's the guy that makes them go. I mean, he's a competitive guy. He kind of has got some traits that, you know, you see toughness, you see competitiveness. So what I'll say is I don't expect Villanova to come in here as an FCS team and, 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 and be big-eyed about playing, playing Maryland because they've got a pretty good team uh, themselves and, and very well coached. Um, but like I always say, every week is not going to be about Villanova. It's going to be about the Terps. Uh, it's going to be about our standard and us taking pride in the way we uh, prepare and the way we do things Monday through Friday. And you know those things won't change for us. It's going to be about um, a bunch of players uh, growing this week, continuing to improve with every practice, and, and I really like our team and how they've been able to do that. Um, you know, lastly, a couple things this weekend. We got family weekend, and we got our mental health awareness games, which uh, for me, really important um, things because family weekend on campus, our students who've been great supporters of us, now they get a chance to show off uh, their new home to their parents as they come visit, and we're excited to have these important people here for our game this weekend. And then also our annual mental health awareness game, which, you know, we'll wear decals. Um, I know this, this year our theme as an athletic department is movement. And Dr. Christy Hall and Christopher Williams, who work with our team, are putting together a lot of things this week to bring awareness uh, to something that's really important to myself and my family. Um, our coaches all got certified in mental health training this summer, uh, which was a big deal for me. Uh, it helps us better identify our student athletes that may be going through some uh, mental health issues. And I'm happy to keep shining the light on something that's really, really important um, to myself and my family. So uh, our game captains this week, Caden Prather, uh, Taze Johnson, and Quayshawn Fuller. And with that, I'll open up to any questions. Mikey, you mentioned growth. Um, as far as Ty's concerned, what have you 
been the biggest areas of growth for him on the field as well as Matt Philly in a preparation standpoint? I would say his confidence, Gene. Um, I've always said, you know, Ty Felton was a talented player. He got overlooked uh, recruiting-wise because of the injury his senior year. Prior to that, he was a guy that was a national recruit, and we got lucky to get him. Uh, because of the injury and because of our loyalty to him. And as I've said, he had opportunities a year ago. Other people <laughs> came knocking, and uh, he decided to stay because he understands what our offensive system offers a guy like him. But the biggest area of his growth has been his confidence. Going into this season, I know he's worked with our sports performance people on just the mindset. Uh, we sent them away. You know, our strength coach, Ryan Davis, sent him and three of our guys away. They had a four day break in summer workouts where they went down to Pensacola uh, to the Exos workout facility, training facility, and they got to see some pros. And I know he spent time with a veteran pro that kind of, he came back a different guy taking care of his body, uh, his confidence is through the roof. Um, he's playing and practicing at a high level. Um, can't say enough good things about Ty, and the, the, the season he's having thus far is a byproduct of the work he put in. Hey, Coach. Um, used to get water up here, Dustin. I don't get water here. <laughs> Lana, you grab me a water, please. Hey, Coach. Uh, for Ty, uh, has been a part of it, but you guys have been one of the best offenses in the Big Ten, and your tenure at generating explosive plays. I wanted to ask, you know, from a fan and for, from our perspective, you're I guess. A fan. Uh, <laughs> Come on, are you a fan? Um, that it's easy to say, oh, you need big plays. Like big plays have to happen on offense. But what is the recipes for big plays? Are there, uh, you know, run and pass game are, are different? Are you calling um, certain plays specifically designed to, to draw big plays? What goes into uh, generating those explosives? Big time players. I mean. Ty caught a hitch for five yards a couple weeks ago and went 80. It's nothing exotic about diagramming a hitch. So big plays are made by big time players. Uh, simple and plain. Our system, every play that you design on offense, you usually have it designed where it blocks everybody, but it comes down to 11 guys or a good percentage of those 11 guys winning their battles. But when it comes to big plays, sure, as a play caller, you see uh, the way people react to plays, and that's one of the beauties of being having people up in the box is all of a sudden you see reactions and you see us hit some double moves because of us maybe, you know, throwing the hitch three, four times, getting five, six yards, and then all of a sudden we see that corner getting antsy. Those things set up big plays, but to be quite honest, you recruit big time players. Uh, and, and the way we do it on our offensive system is we try to give our best players as many touches as they can Understanding that within those touches, big plays are happening. Ty's a high touch guy in our system. He's a guy that's trying to get 10 to 15 touches a game. Three touchdowns, a lot of yardage. Uh, and those things just happen when you get your best players the ball and involved. So do you and the offensive coaching staff really emphasize those plays? Or is there like a certain amount that you're looking to hit on per we game? We have goals, and I'm not going to share them with you. Yeah. Afternoon, Mike. What's up? Uh, four takeaways last Saturday against Virginia, and this is the rule, not the exception the last couple of years. What are some of the seeds to the success for your defense being able to get those takeaways? You know, I thought this past weekend, you know, even in the loss, we had three takeaways, which is where, you know, very few teams lose. Like, I, just, I show a stat every Sunday, every Monday with our team. Uh, the winning ledger of the Big Ten teams of teams on the plus side of the takeaway ratio and play teams on the opposite. After yesterday's, I think it was 25 and 2, people on the plus side of the takeaway ratio in our conference uh, up through the first three games, teams are 25 and 2 just being on the plus side. And so to me, on the defensive side for us, we've made a big emphasis on the importance, just like we talked about big plays with Sam, the importance of takeaways on defense. And it starts with, I mean, if you come watch us today, you'll see we every Tuesday, Wednesday, we do a turnover circuit where we invest the time with our starters. We're working on protecting the football. Our defensive guys are working on taking the ball off their bodies. And it's good on good work. And uh, we rehearse trying to take the ball away. But I thought this past week and a couple of the times we did a good job of showing one picture, uh, disguising our coverage and then getting out of it. And, and, and a couple of times they've, we got some pressure on the quarterback where he had to make some errant throws and 
Uh, you know, Dante, who's Big Ten Player of the Week on defense, was uh, Johnny on the spot for us uh, for and, one of them. And uh, uh, three games into the season, your thoughts on Billy's progress, his growth, uh, back to back to back. Billy, the kid, is playing really clean, good football, man. I, I, I mean, when I talk about the mind of a coach and the skill of a player, um, you know, a play happened in a game that just kind of just stamped his passport that he's made that 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 taking that next step we had a the last touchdown run he had we were in a formation he saw that there was a blitz coming off the edge and something that's not even in our system he he points at Caden Prather and says hey you come in here line in close and turn out on him which allowed the edge rusher to not be a free hitter like that's mitigating risk that's having the mind of a coach but still the skill of a player and um, Billy's playing really clean for us uh, making good decisions I think there's still some growth in there for us uh, in terms of you know the consistency and then as I like to say he always has one one or two Billy balls uh, during the game where he throws into team meetings and throws the ball in areas that the ball should not go and we've got to eliminate those plays and, and, and to me I but I'm really pleased the way he's playing. Mike you talked about uh, Ty going down in Pensacola I'm just curious about Ty and Billy Edwards relationship you know their connection can you talk about like do, do they work extra time or what is that connection what is that relationship like? You know our whole team we got a team full of workers and that's why when I came in here earlier this summer and talked about uh, the work ethic of this team is phenomenal and it's not just the good players or guys that you write about it's this team is has that and understands putting in and doing the work and they've embraced that piece of it almost to the point where I've had to coach them up on maybe having a little more fun and enjoying it because as an 18 or 22 year old and you take on this responsibility and and everybody has you have these influences and, and all this information at your hands and it creates anxiety and I've done everything I can to release pressure on these guys to to understand and love the the, the way we prepare and we talk about practice being the show make practice the show not Saturday the show should feel like practice and so the big emphasis for this team has been that and Billy and Ty uh, exemplify that uh, Ty's done a lot of work behind the scenes I said something to him in the team meeting yesterday you know he's a guy that was catching off the lobster the tennis ball machine at from 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. and he's in there in the summer and he's in there in the off season and he's doing them when nobody's watching when nobody's writing articles nobody's talking about how bad we are he's working and all that is being seen now because of the, the stuff he did and the pride he took in doing the work in the dark. Mike, uh, do you have an update on Andre Roy Jr.? I don't. If he's unavailable, how does that impact what you guys do on offensive line in terms of the next guy game? has to come up? The next guy up mentality. Whenever we've had injuries, it's the next man up, and we'll turn to whoever our third tackle has been. Um, rotate some guys through. I expect Dre to be available, but um, I have not had an update just yet. Um, he was out there yesterday walking around, but um, it'll be next man up as we've always done when we've dealt with injuries. Hey, coach. Matt, what um, up? We've seen Nolan Ray. Uh, he's had an increase uh, in carries in each of the last three games. Um, what have you seen from him that's given you the confidence to, for him to not just be a change of pace back, but a guy that's getting a, a decent amount of the volume? I mean, he's one of our top playmakers in our offensive system. If you were to, you know, as I think of things, and I know as Josh puts together his, his thoughts in our game plan on offense, it's always geared toward getting our best players the ball. And Nolan is one of our best players on offense. We've got a really good running back room. Kobe McDonald uh, made some big runs yes, uh, last this past Saturday and has continued to kind of find a role in a niche as well. Um, you know, but with Nolan, he's a high touch guy that we know if you get him enough uh, opportunities, uh, he's going to make a play for you, uh, explosive play. And he did it all summer in our practices. And he's one of those guys that we got to continue to find ways to keep him involved. Hi, Coach. For the defense, held Virginia to 128 yards, rushing Michigan State the week before to 130 yards. So what have you seen from your defensive line and Quayshawn and the, to show that the success that they've been having so far? I mean, it starts with our front seven when it comes to the run game. Um, uh, that We have not made a, 
it's not been a secret that the strength of our team is that front. When you think about the Taze Johnsons, who's played a lot of football around here, um, uh, Quayshawn Fuller transferring from Florida State the last three years has been really productive and has grown in our program. Tommy King Basote is having a big, big year for us. Jordan Phillips, we've we've recruited and created the depth and size in the in, on the interior. And I haven't even mentioned guys like Neo Avery, who's you know starting to come on here the last couple of weeks. Here you see him coming on. So the front seven, um, the linebackers, Ruben, Caleb Wheatland, those guys are a veteran group. Uh, when you are able to stop the run, the way we've been able to do it makes people play one dimensional. And that's where for us on the back end, we've got to just continue to develop back there to where uh, we can hold up. And if once we kind of get that thing in sync, I think we'll have the makings of a really good defense that you'll see us continue improve, to improve as the year goes on, as we, you know, as we always talk about that growth mindset. Hey, Coach. Ahmed, what up? Hey, Coach, uh, I know obviously you know, you've talked about just kind of the, the non conference scheduling philosophy over the years, but I'm just kind of curious just, you know, in 20, uh, your first year um, beating Syracuse and then uh, taking down uh, Virginia and back to back years, West Virginia as well. Um, how do you feel like you've seen the brand, the Maryland brand, kind of grow and evolve just kind of be seeing that success uh, against some of these regional teams? That's a really good question. And, and I, I would say that based on the way we're recruiting, that our regional brand has improved. Um, contrary to what some may think, you know, it's not linear, it's not gonna go straight up, it's gonna have peaks, valleys, steps back, setbacks, takeoffs. But if you study us, which I know you do, um, we've recruited well. And recruiting tends to get better as people tend to see you get better. And I think that's um, when you talk about growth mindset uh, and the people that are inside Jones Hill House and the people that have intimate knowledge about our team, they understand the magnitude of what we're trying to get accomplished. Thanks very much.